This is, as I've said many times, a pandemic of the unvaccinated. It's, it's hard, uh, it's, it's someone wiser than me said that, that one of the problems with, with people who believe conspiracy theories is it's not just enough to stop believing the conspiracy theory, but often it takes you away from your community, um, the people around you that believe the same way that you do. We love you, we care about you. I, pr I promise I'm not part of some grand conspiracy theory. Uh, I, if you if you don't believe me, if you're um, you know if you're if you're a religious person, um, if, if you're if you're a Catholic, listen to the Pope, who, who said that this is a moral imperative um, for everyone to get vaccinated. If you're if you're a Latter Day Saint, listen to the the president of the the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, who said that this is not just a godsend, but a literal godsend, literally sent from God um, to bless us. If your if if politics is your religion, then then believe Donald Trump, who was so instrumental in getting this vaccine to us, who got the vaccine himself, and who has encouraged others to get the vaccine. It is with great reluctance that I have agreed to this calling. I love democracy. I love the republic. The attendant on my life. Has left me scarred and deformed. But I assure you, my resolve has never been stronger. So, do you think specifically we're in a declining democracy? I do. Yeah, I do. And it scares the hell out of me, and it should everybody else. Cox at his monthly news conference said one aspect of declining democracies are threats against public officials. Um, yes, I've received threats. Well, welcome back to the Tree of Liberty Society. Make sure you don't miss another show by clicking on the subscribe button and going to Tree of Liberty Society and becoming a part of the solution. But uh, all those, those clips that we saw of Tyrant Cox talking in the past those are those that's all old news right you want to know what, what's he doing now what's he doing now well uh the corporate media in utah has actually shown that the utah governor is actually a tyrant without even saying it they're actually promoting it and saying this is a great thing um we have uh on the ksl.com website they were like making this big deal about how this tweet that tyrant cox has uh put out uh, is just brilliant and it's going viral because all of these just, you know, huge globalists just love it so much. And so I want to just show you a, a little section from this article at KSL talking about Ackman, a Harvard graduate, and then how he shared this tweet from Tyrant Cox. And he shared Cox post saying that it was brilliant. Well, what's so brilliant about uh, Cox's post? Because they also have a, a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. And of course, a Deseret News contributor. All these globalists and internationalists are saying this was just genius. Uh, Cox's post uh, from earlier this month in May. And uh, Cox, uh, Tyrant Cox says, can't stop thinking about this Francis uh, Fukuyama paragraph in his book, The End of History. But supposing that the world has become filled up, so to speak, with liberal democracies, such that there exists no tyranny and oppression worthy of the name against which to struggle. Experience suggests that if men cannot struggle on behalf of a just cause, because that just cause has, uh, was victorious in an earlier generation, then they will struggle against the just cause. They will struggle for the sake of struggle. They will struggle, in other words, out of a, a certain boredom, for they cannot imagine living in a world without struggle. And if the greater part of the world in which they live is characterized by peaceful and prosperous liberal democracy, then they will struggle against that peace and prosperity and against democracy. Gaslighting, just to the, like, if you wanted to look up in the dictionary gaslighting, this would be the perfect example of gaslighting. Blaming the victim or resisting the tyranny against them, saying there is no tyranny. The only reason you're fighting tyranny is because you uh, fighting right now and resisting what the government is doing right now is because you're bored. You you have too much freedom, right? Your inflation's too low, taxes are too low. You're able to build on your property without permission from the government. 
Um, you can you can afford any home that you want. You have no worry of the the government coming down and intruding on your your right to do business. Um, you know that there are no worries in the world, right? You don't have to worry about what's going on in schools. Things are just perfect. You've got nothing to worry about. Oh my goodness, it's it's just insane to think that there that that we're just resisting government because we're bored. There's just too much freedom in the world, so now we have to fight against it. These tyrants are, this is the, the classic, not only gaslighting, but Orwellian doublespeak of uh, slavery as freedom and freedom as slavery. And so because we are in abject slavery today, in fact, if you go to the tree of liberty society.com, uh, I really recommend this book written in the 1600s uh, that we carry in our store um, called uh, Killing No Murder. And this was a book written, I mean, read by the founding fathers and something that, that very much guided them in their efforts to uh, resist the tyranny of King George. And it is more relevant today in our resistance against the government today. And so what is a tyrant? And the definition is clear, it is concise, and it is something that we can actually look to. And I think that it's really important that we that we do look at it right now. And so in this book, it lays out uh, that there are two kinds of tyrants. One kind of tyrant is one that has no right to govern, and then the other kind of tyrant is the one that governs tyrannically. So even if you don't govern tyrannically, if you have no right to govern, you are a tyrant. And of course, even if you are legitimately in, in position of power, but you govern tyrannically, you are a tyrant. Pretty simple, right? So what is a tyrant? Um, when we look through some of the examples of this, these are just natural law principles. It says, if the ruler is not appointed by God, nor chosen by the people, he is not a ruler, but an invader. Okay. So it, just ask yourself, are these leaders, are they chosen by God? And can we really trust that they were chosen by the people? Are our elections legitimate? And then, of course, and those that are subject to that power are not governed, but they are oppressed. Okay, if, that, if your leader was not chosen by the people, and if he was not chosen by God, you are do not have a ruler, you are oppressed. Okay? Next. Often in these uh, that these tyrants to be able to puff themselves up and to make themselves look like they are your friend they will this book gets into it, it says that they will pretend to defend liberty they'll give just these powerful speeches they'll use the military uh, they rule by fraud more than force with cunning plausible pretenses to impose upon men's understandings and in the end they master those that had so little wit as to reply uh, rely on their faith and integrity so they will lie to the people to get them to subject themselves to the tyranny that he wants to put upon them. Then he will slowly rid the ranks of government and or milit and the military of moral people and then slowly replace them with others that are immoral and that want to help him in his um, efforts to impose tyranny. And then that these tyrants will impoverish the people to make it more difficult to oppose them with taxes, inflation, excise taxes, etc., the, you know, the, the charging of your ability to do business with one person or another. Is that not going on today? Oh my goodness, it's insane. And then we, they are off, of course, they will make war to distract the people um, and also to be able to make an excuse for them to raise their taxes. Uh, they don't want the people gathering and even in small groups because they don't want the people building relationships. Who did that? Hmm, let me think about that. Those of influence and religion will make the people believe that the government is good. Uh, they get disposable people to do his dirty work for them so he can fire them and make the people happy, but nothing actually changes. And of course, they claim to be religious and God-fearing. Didn't we hear that? All of these things from not, not just this tyrant Cox, but from all of our, basically all of our uh, political leaders today. So now who is this individual that Tyrant Cox is using to gaslight us into thinking the only reason we would resist their rule is because we're bored. We have too much freedom. Who, who is this Fukuyama? Okay, so according to uh, Wikipedia, uh, Fukuyama, of course, he was a, a neocon. He is one of the early founders of the neocon, neoconservatism movement. What is a neocon? Uh, I will put a link to a longer video explanation of that in the description of this video because uh, I think it's important to go into more detail, but I didn't want to kind of get distracted with that. But essentially, uh, a neocon 
is, or a neoconservative, is a, a, a globalist for the warfare state, whereas on the left, they're globalists for the welfare state, and on the, with the neocons, it's the right. They are, the, they are globalists for the warfare state. And they want to. They were, uh, of course, behind things like the Patriot Act. They were the ones behind things like, um, you know, the, the invasion um, in Iraq. And he was a part of the Rand Corporation, which is also another globalist organization linked to the Council on Foreign Relations, and uh, being uh, major pushers of government control of the internet. Um, another uh, organization that he just happens to be a part of is looky here on the CFR.org website, on their membership roster, you have him as a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, a openly globalist organization with their reports saying that they need to empower and uh, give more power to the United Nations until it is a global government. And so this globalist, this tyrannical globalist, this person promoting globalism and world tyranny is someone that wrote about how the only people that are opposing their global tyranny are people that are, are bored because, you know, there is no more tyranny. And so Spencer Cox just really has this connection with this globalist <laughs> that wants to build world government. And then, of course, he uses it to gaslight us to say, you know, the only people opposing me are, are people that are bored because they have too much freedom. It's disgusting. We need to understand these principles. And so that we can not just, you know, go on the defense and say no more, you know, stop this new thing you're doing against me. But we need to go on the offense and start to tear down their towers. And that none shall deliver. Please go to the tree of liberty society.com. Become a member today. Support this work that we're doing and uh, things that you will never hear anywhere else. Tree of liberty society.com. We'll see you there.